In the middle of Berlin, near the main train station and the Charité Hospital, Professor Peter Hegemann's offices and laboratories are located right next to the Museum for Naturkunde. He is a world-renowned biophysicist and has been researching proteins in green algae that respond to light with enthusiasm for almost 40 years. It was also he who first discovered the sensory photoreceptors in algae. The light-sensitive proteins, so-called channel rhodopsins, form the basis for the research field of optogenetics, of which Peter Hegemann is a co-founder. We are not neuroscientists. We are biophysicists trying to understand the mechanisms of light-sensitive microbial proteins, and we are working on modifying them in such a way that they can be used in neuronal research in a better and even more versatile way. For 19 years, Peter Hegemann has been a professor at Humboldt Universität zu Berlin and head of the research group for experimental biophysics. In 2015, he was honored with the Hector Science Award and has been a member of the Hector Fellow Academy since. The list of further national and international awards that he has received so far is proof of Peter Hegemann's scientific achievements. For him, it takes certain characteristics, but also structures, to be able to conduct outstanding research. I think the most difficult phase in a scientific life is the post-doc phase. In other words, after finishing the doctoral thesis, which you are doing for a specific boss. It is difficult to find your own research topic which is original enough, which no one else is doing in the same way, but that also has to work at some point. But I would recommend to my colleagues not to evaluate the number of publications of young people after three or four years, but rather the originality of the research. Unfortunately, my colleagues don't do that, at least most of them. The result is that young people hardly dare to tackle new difficult topics and work on them for many years. And that has to change. Und über viele Jahre daran zu arbeiten, und das muss sich ändern. Peter Hegemann and his colleagues conduct cross-disciplinary research between biology, physics, chemistry, medicine, and neurosciences. They work in the field of basic research. Nevertheless, the research results have a wide variety of applications. For example, research is carried out on novel treatment methods for neuronal diseases such as Parkinson's disease. Patients who have lost their sight or hearing can be hopeful for a cure. Researchers are also developing optical pacemakers for the human heart. Collaborating with researchers worldwide is the key to innovative solutions for the future. Our research area, or specifically my research group, is working on analyzing new proteins. At the moment, we are working on light-activated enzymes. Und wir arbeiten da sehr eng zusammen mit unserem Kollegen Oded Beja. We are working very closely with our colleague Oded Beja from Haifa at the Technion, who is our photoreceptor archaeologist. More specifically, he fishes sequences out of the sea, analyzes them, and tells us every now and then, this is an interesting protein that you should take a closer look at. That is how it works. This is how you get into new areas and new topics that you didn't even know could be useful somehow. But quite a number of these proteins can be applied in neuroscience or other fields afterwards. And even if you only do basic research, as we do, you are pleased when a certain broader application of these tools emerges. Dann von diesen Werkzeugen auch entsteht oder sich entwickelt. A collaborative project by Peter Hegemann, funded by the Hector Fellow Academy, has been developed together with Hector Fellow Karl Leo from the TU Dresden. The title of the research project is High Resolution Optogenetics with Organic Light Emitting Diodes. The light-emitting diodes are being tested in optogenetics on light-sensitive proteins. They were developed by the physicists at TU Dresden and can imitate different colors. The aim is to investigate signal propagation within a neuronal network such as there are in the brain. One of the researchers in Peter Hegemann's group is the young scientist Rodrigo Fernandez Laore. He works on channel rhodopsins, i.e. light-sensitive proteins that occur on the cell membrane of certain algae. More precisely, they are ion channels that can be activated by light. 
For example, blue light opens the channels and leads to the influx of ions, which are electrically charged atoms or molecules into the cell. To be able to study these currents, Rodrigo has to prepare the experiment in several steps. He must create cell cultures, separate the DNA and regulate the current flow with light. Der Bereich, in dem wir uns befinden mit unserer Forschung, heißt Optogenetik. Our research area is called optogenetics. This means that we are controlling processes with light that were done with electrodes a long time ago. In other words, relatively rough, a bit more elegant. Light has the advantage of being very fast. Nothing is faster than the speed of light. But it's also a relatively non-invasive way to make such processes happen. In the end, the goal is to modify these channel rhodopsins so that they conduct calcium, for example, instead of sodium. That's been a big project of mine, relatively successful. We also check that the channel rhodopsins really work the way they are supposed to. This was also part of our project with Giuseppe. We took the light sources from Giuseppe, or from the group of Carl Leo, he didn't just do it on his own, of course, and then we tested those light sources in the context that we know. We tested the channel rhodopsins of which we know that they are supposed to conduct certain ions, and it worked. Ultimately, we want to create very good tools for other scientists, but also understand how these channel rhodopsins work. In laboratory mice, it is being researched how it is possible to control brain processes with the help of light. The results are very promising for medicine, especially if they lead to the development of treatment methods that can avoid major surgery, for example, on the brain. Because neuronal processes are driven by electrical activity, we can control that activity through our light-activated channels. For example, if we introduce the ion channels, the channel rhodopsins, into a mouse, by exposing the specific neuron which we have introduced into the gene to light, we can make the mouse perform certain activities, or, depending on the channel rhodopsin and the ion selectivity, to avoid these activities können wir die Maus dazu bringen, gewisse Aktivitäten durchzuführen oder je nach Kanalrobsin und Ionenselektivität diese Aktivitäten zu vermeiden. If we take an example, the mouse is not able to run if we inhibit the running neurons, but the same thing is also valid the other way round. And that was the original finding. Channel rhodopsins in the neuron get the mouse running. The most important milestone along the way was Peter Hagerman's discovery of channel rhodopsins in green algae, which provided the idea to combine the methods of optics and genetics. But it is certainly difficult to predict how biophysics and optogenetics will develop in the 21st century. It's always difficult to project something into the future. If you keep doing what you are doing now, then you are not an outstanding scientist. If you are really good, you have to do something new. For example, I could imagine using other media. It would be an idea to combine optogenetics with ultrasound genetics. That is, using ultrasound or radio waves or something similar. In other words, you have to move into completely new dimensions that you might not even think of today. These are central goals of the Hector Fellow Academy. On the one hand, to provide opportunities for outstanding scientists to network, and on the other hand, to support the emergence of new research approaches. Which innovative research projects will arise in the future with Professor Hagerman and the other Hector Fellows? We are looking forward to finding out.